Good morning and happy Father's Day. We begin our worship today with a collect of welcoming found in your bulletin. Please stand and join. The Lord be living within us, sent to our earth. We mark today the occasion of Juneteenth, Episcopal Migration Sunday in the Diocese of New Jersey. We also hold and pray the people of St. Stephen's in Birmingham as we mark this day in worship and praise to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to hope and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the first book, first book of Kings. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he killed all the prophets with a sword. With the sword, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, "So may the gods do to me, and more so also, if I do not make your life and the life of the one, make your life like the like of the, of them by this time tomorrow." Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he, he himself uh, went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked what, that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, he, an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked of hot sto on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, get up and eat. Otherwise, your journey will be, far, will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in, uh, in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then their word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous, very zealous for the Lord of God, of God of hosts, and for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. <clears throat> Excuse me have forsaken your covenants, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was spitting, splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind in an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then, he came, then came a voice that said to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the, with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness uh, of Damascus. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm uh, 42 and 43. We would do responsibly by full verse. As a deer longs for a flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. Thank you. 
My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help, and my God. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgiven me? Why must I walk mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my, my help and my God. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you cast me off? Why must I walk uh, mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came me, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law is our disciplinary discipline. Try that again. Is that right? Therefore the, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by our faith but now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for that many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. 
Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the men and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man whom Jesus, from whom G, the de, Jesus, from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Sometimes as I am challenged to weave a sermon, I have two or three threads of scripture to work with. Sometimes that number of threads is, as we heard in the gospel today, legion, many. There are so many things to bring into context today as we seek to have an awareness of and a deeper connection to what it means to walk in the life of Christ that it feels like we're having to wear multiple hats. And in fact, today I am wearing multiple garments. I have two sets of stoles on, in case you hadn't noticed. One is the orange, and this is the traditional color now in the Episcopal Church of being against gun violence. We had a shooting in Alabama at a potluck, a church potluck in an Episcopal Church, and we shouldn't distinguish between Episcopal and other. There have been too many shootings. That's enough to say. Too many. And on top of that, I also wear around my neck something that usually when I am challenged to preach sermons in this context, I actually wear underneath the garment. It is a kente cloth stole that I was given by a dear friend whose father was an Episcopal priest. If you look at the Life magazine cover of Martin Luther King Jr. with two black clergymen at uh, the steps of the Washington Monument, one of those is Father DuBose. And after he had fought the good fight for civil rights in the South, after he had journeyed to Philadelphia and worked in the inner cities of that community to find justice and racial equity, he traveled as well to Africa and received this as part of the Africanization of the gospel movement. And I was given this to wear to remember that we are bound by gospel to preach not only peace, but also justice in this life. So sometimes I wear that on the inside, but today I wear it on the outside. So you can hear this beginning of the many threads that need to be woven into a line of hope today. And that's the thing we're here to do. We're to, here to talk about hope in the context of justice and peace. What are we called to do when we are confronted with these things that happen in the world around us, when we are confronted with violence, when we are confronted with hate, when we are confronted with tumult and torment and pain? And I am blessed today to be given a gospel that relates, I think, directly to this context, not only in what happens in the world and how do we observe it and take note of it, how do we acknowledge it as well as human beings who, when we gaze upon such things, rightly and legitimately experience fear. We seek to pull back and to conserve and protect ourselves and those we love when we are exposed to this kind of hate and violence and injustice. But if we are to be faithful to Christ, we turn our faces to it and we enter into a relationship with the people who are torn and rent and subject to these demons. And they are legion. 
the things that rend us and tear us as human beings in this society, would that they were from without, but instead we must acknowledge that they are from within. In the same way that the garrison demoniac for more time than anyone could remember was torn and rent by the demons that had entered into him and many had entered in. The people around him had done everything they could to try to align him into a more appropriate life and lifestyle. They had bound him with chains and shackles, which was the answer to dealing with people with mental health issues and emotional health issues and issues of possession in the, those days. Bind them up so they cannot be a harm to themselves or to others. He broke those chains in the madness of his pain, in the brokenness of his heart and spirit. He broke them, chains forged to contain and to restrict. And instead of being able to live in a house, he was forced to live in the tombs among the dead. In the stew of corruption, he made his life. What semblance there could be called of it. And everyone avoided him and just simply spoke of the wild man. He had lost his name and his identity in the face of the tumult and multitude that afflicted him from within. The moment Jesus' foot struck the ground as they crossed the Sea of Galilee and he came out of the tombs to meet him, Jesus said to him, be healed. And instead of leaving him, the spirits within said, what have you to do with us? Go away. We don't want to go back into the abyss. We don't want to go back into those dark places ourselves. Even the demons have places they fear to go. What is your name, says the Lord? legion for we are many they pleaded with him to be pushed into a herd of swine something despised in jesus's time by those people that jesus was teaching and preaching to something that was cast off as far as they were concerned and even the swine ran into the sea and chose oblivion rather than to be corrected such are the demons that afflict us that would choose oblivion rather than correction The people heard from the swine herds that ran off that something great had happened. And when they arrived, they did not find the madman. Instead, they found someone who was washed and scrubbed clean, whose hair had been combed through, whose feet had been cleansed from the filth that they had been forced to wade through. And they discovered a man in his right mind. You would think there would be cause for rejoicing. There were causes for rejoicing, and there was celebration when there were times when Jesus healed those who were broken and torn by physical affliction, even by spiritual affliction. There were times when they would throw a party. In this instance, they were terrified. No one was ready for this kind of healing, this kind of wholeness to be confronted with how they had treated a man and feel perhaps that they had failed to find the thing that would help him. And instead, someone from outside, a stranger arrives and fixes it. At least that's what they're seeing and thinking. And that kind of power, that kind of dunamis in the Greek word is terrifying to them. Go away, please. We can't bear this. There are times when my wife and I are watching the news and hearing reports that we turn it off because we just can't look at it again. Just like the Gerasenes, we beg, we beg that awareness to go away from us. Just don't make us look at it one more time. But if we are to follow the example of the gospel, we not only must gaze upon it, we must become agents of healing. It is the unfiltered, unrelenting gaze of the one who is ancient of days, the one who is Christ himself calling upon us not only to love and accept the love and forgiveness that is given to us in Christ, but to extend that to others, to be the proclaimers of freedom and healing, the agents of justice and hope, to be the people that God would recognize just like Elijah was in the wilderness. What are you doing here, Elijah? And for us to say, I have been jealous for the Lord. I have done my very best and I am tired and I am afraid. 
an understanding that when we offer that up to God, God offers us a commission. When we are flagging in strength, when we are struggling in spirit, God commissions us and sends us back into the fray. You will go, says God to Elijah, to anoint Haziel as king over, over Aram, Josiah as king over Israel, and Elisha shall be your companion, your inheritor of the spirit. You have work to do before you can put down your own mantle, the mantle of witness, the mantle of praise. I preached at a funeral last week and talked from the words of the prophet Isaiah, how it is that when we are challenged by grief, God promises to come to us on God's holy mountain to give us the oil of gladness instead of the ashes of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. This is why I wore my double garment today. This is why I preach to you and speak to the healing and love and light that we are called to bear witness of to Christ, not only to the world, but more particularly to this community and to the households in which we dwell. To wear on the outside the mantles that call upon us to strive for peace and healing and reconciliation and justice. Not to wear them with pride, but with humility and to give honor to our God. The very last words that Jesus was able to share with his friends in his last week of mortal life were simple commandments that we should, when we are in community, and you know that we are always in community in Christ and with each other, to love one another. That means to hold back no word of good news. I give honor to my brothers and sisters who are descended from the enslaved as we mark Juneteenth today, remembering deeply and profoundly that at the time when the Emancipation Proclamation was offered up till a time two years later, over a quarter million people did not receive the good news of their own freedom to be given the grace and the opportunity to join in a celebration of heritage and culture and hope and freedom. And to remember that we are called to gather in Christ and bear witness and welcome in love. In love, we are called to give, offer forgiveness to those who would per perpetrate violence even upon the body of Christ itself. That is our first and committed response Every time we hear the bad news of violence and injustice in our community, we respond with the good news of love and peace. For in Christ, there is no slave or free. There is no Jew nor Greek. There is no division that cannot be overcome by the power and love of the Almighty. And we are the hand of God in this. To love one another. To serve one another to render hope and peace at all costs and in all ways. There is no exception. There is no allowance for anything but total and utter love and commitment and grace to God. As we seek to unravel the tangles of our lives, the complicated legions of stresses and worries that overcome us. I urge you to look within your own heart, find the garments, the mantles of praise, the garments that offer the opportunity to bind up our own worries into service to the other, the gift of those tools that we have to bear witness. Healing is needed. And we are the agents of that grace. Let us rejoice and give thanks. Amen.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to stand and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. All of us are one in Christ Jesus. Let us pray as one body, saying, we put our trust in you, O God. Hear us, answer us, send forth. Send out your light with truth and that they may lead your people into the joy and gladness we experience at your altar. Send us out to shine light and share joy. We put our trust in you, O God. Hear us, answer us, and send them forth. God our, uh, God, our strength, remembering those who feel forgotten, be the salvation for those who are, who are being oppressed. Defend the cause of the innocent. Deliver the world from wickedness. We put our trust in you, O God. You, O Lord, Grant your loving kindness in the daytime. The night is filled with your songs. We thank you for your bless for blessing your creation with your presence in all times and all seasons. We put we put our trust in you, O oh God. Lord Jesus, break the chains of those held in bondage. Restore those forgotten by society. May all prisoners and captives, by the, by the power of your love and mercy, have their dignity renewed. We put our trust in you, O oh God. Amen. We pray for those weighed down by heavy souls. We pray for those who feel like they're in over their heads, for the disquieted, for the ill. We put our trust in you, O oh God. Yeah. O oh God, in Christ Jesus, have you made us your children. We pray for the dying and the dead. Bring them into your heavenly dwelling where they may be at home with you forever. We put our trust in you, O oh God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. <clears throat> Excuse me. We pray for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Anne-Marie, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, 
Maura, Alex, the Hawk and Josh family, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Ann, Dora, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Shirley, Betty, Guy, Pete, Pat, Piper, Aaliyah, William, Phil, Eddie, George, Pat, Tom, AJ, Brandon, Gail, Lisa, and Teddy. Remember as well in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the province of Episcopal Church of South Sudan, the diocese in the, in the diocese cycle of prayer, they pray for the reverends Edwin T. Chinnery, Robert Fitzpatrick, Robert W. McColl, Maria B. Sanzo, Stephanie E. Shockley, and Michael J. Way. We give thanks to those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Sean, Robert, Ron, Jaden, Anne Marie, Judy, and Sarah. We remember those serving the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Connor, Matthew, Austin, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. Today's altar flowers are given in the glory of God by Gloria Crum in loving memory of Edward G. Crum Jr. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace for us. God's peace. Good morning. Please be seated. I bid you peace and grace as we uh, continue with our worship today. We offer this Eucharist with special intention for on this Father's Day, this Juneteenth, this Episcopal Migration Ministries Day, this, uh, I'm missing something, gun violence awareness. I mean, you name it, we've got it going on today here at St. Peter's in terms of the request for prayers. Let us give thanks for the opportunity we have to break bread and lift up the cup and celebrate this opportunity to seek God's healing and love. On um, this Father's Day, we give thanks for all fathers, those we have found upon the way, those we have been given in grace and in peace, and uh, also honored to be able to mark 27 years of priesthood with you all, having been a significant portion of that. Thank you, God, for St. Peter's. Thank you, God, for all the churches Laura and I have been with in ages past, and I had known since pretty much the dawn of time itself. Very honored to be with you all and to be able to celebrate these milestones. Tomorrow, the office is closed in observance of Juneteenth, and uh, there are many resources that are available through our diocesan website. Urge you to check those out to learn more about this incredible new national holiday and the opportunity we have to celebrate it. And I do want to stress that this is an opportunity for celebration. One of the things I appreciate uh, from hearing from friends about this idea of Juneteenth is not that this is a day of repentance. This is a day of celebration of an opportunity to rejoice with brothers and sisters who were enslaved and now are free. And let us give honor to that grace and celebrate with them, knowing that the work is not yet done. It is also cause for celebration as we approach the month of July, because here at St. Peter's, 
we mark the feast of Christmas as Christmas in July, um, at least on a retail sense. Uh, you have no idea, actually Harriet does, just how much Christmas we have in the basement waiting to come up and to be sold for fun and for glory and for also the benefit of the mission and ministry of St. Peter's. Please let your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, folks you don't even know that well on social media know that Christmas in July is gonna be an extravaganza, not only of savings, but also of fun. I'm not kidding when I say that there's a room in the basement that the thrift shop is using to store things that is literally to the ceiling with Christmas. It's amazing. And it will all go in July because we're gonna start over again. Nancy, do you wanna say anything about Soul for Souls? Thank you. For those of you who are watching online, and, and uh, we, we can't mic everyone in the church, um, just be aware that Souls for Souls is a great charity. We collect shoes uh, during the month of June, and uh, Nancy makes sure that those go to the charity. These shoes literally go around the world, but please, as you go through your closet and unpack all of those pairs of shoes that you no longer want or wear, um, please do make sure that they are bound together in some fashion. Um, nothing is more frustrating than having a mountain of shoes and having one size 11 brogue and trying to figure out where in a thousand piles, a thousand shoes, there is its mate. It's kind of like trying to find that one sock in the laundry. So please do make sure they're bound together when you bring them in. We have a new Change for Change charity here at St. Peter's. Those of you who aren't aware, um, originally we used to have pennies for the parish. This was a jar that sat in the back that was help, helping us um, meet our budget. And we decided to change that years ago and focus on outreach. So for the next half of a year, the change for change jar in the back, your spare change, the few dollars that you might have in your pocket after you've been to the different things around the world and uh, have those in hand, um, please do render that up as a thank offering to God. We will take those and distribute them to our different charities. We just finished with Interfaith Rise. How'd we do? We have one more week. One more week of, oh, we have one more week. End of June, sorry. Starting in July. I was so excited for Episcopal Relief and Development. Starting in July, we'll be helping out with Episcopal Relief and Development, which if you're a, a cradle Episcopalian, you know that used to be the presiding bishops fund for world relief, and then they just made it ERD, Episcopal Relief and Development. The idea behind this charity is that it goes literally all around the world. Oftentimes, they are the first boots on the ground um, with regard to any kind of disaster. They are there when hurricanes, earthquakes, famine, Ebola, um, school shootings, you name it, ERD is on the ground helping out right away. So we're very happy to help with that. And then finally, just to remind you, Alice's Cup donations. And of course, I was uh, supposed to bring in some radishes that I harvested from our garden. I didn't do that. Laura knew I was going to forget. I'll bring them in on Tuesday when I come to the office. But if you've got extra produce, be a backyard partner for Alice's Cup. Bring in that fresh produce. We're getting into zucchini season. Um, and we all know how many zucchini you get from one plant. There's only so much zucchini bread you can cook. So please do bring a few of those into the, into the church. We'll make sure those get to Alice's Cup and are offered up to our friends abroad throughout the community who need assistance. Don't forget, Luann is holding up the cards. She has ShopRite and Stop and Shop cards, which we need some ShopRite cards. She's already got that covered. Yep. Thank you, honey. Offer to God a sacrifice of Thanksgiving. Make, I all did it again. We have the chalice back, folks. On this side will be the bronze chalice, the brass chalice for dipping and tinction. 
On this side will be the silver chalice for sipping. Just so you're aware, if you choose to receive the blood of Christ by sipping, it is a sanitary exercise. The alcohol and the precious metal of the chalice combined with the wipe of the purificator ensures that you have a safe surface from which to sip. On the other side, our chalice bearer will take the wafer from your hands, dip that into the intinction after having sanitized their hands, of course, dip that in and place that on your tongue. If you'd be so kind as to stick your tongue out just a little bit, not like this, but like this, be polite. Um, and that assists in the transfer of the wafer to you. To you. Um, just be aware that if they do make contact with teeth, lip, or tongue, they will then set the chalice down, sanitize their hands, and return to the fray. Know that you are always welcome to receive in one kind or in both. If you choose not to receive the chalice, that's fine. Simply pause and acknowledge the chalice bearer. This is an act of communion, even to be in the presence of the blood of Christ. Acknowledge them as they offer it up. They, you don't have to sip from it. Just hear the words, the blood of Christ, as you move back to your pew. If you're coming to the sipping side, please return to your pew from this way. If you're coming to the dipping side, please return to your pew from this way, no matter which side of the church you're coming from. Does that all make sense? One of these days, probably about the time we just go back to the rail, I'll remember to do it right before I do the offertory sentence, instead of breaking it in half every single week as I have done for the last three. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Padre Santos y bondadoso, en tu amor infinito nos hiciste para ti. Y cuando hablamos, caído en el pecado y quedamos esclavos del mal y de la muerte. Tú en tu misericordia enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo único y eterno, a vivir nuestra naturaleza humana, a vivir y morir como un uno de nosotros, a reconciliarnos contigo, el Dios y Padre de todos. Extendió su brazo sobre la cruz y se ofreció a sí mismo en obediencia a tu voluntad, un sacrificio perfecto para todo el mundo. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now in the language of our heart, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Let's see, brother. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. 
body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Que la paz de Dios, que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, mantenga sus corazones y mentes en conocimiento y al amor de Dios y de su Hijo Jesucristo nuestro Señor y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo estén con ustedes y morar con ustedes eternamente. May the peace of God, which succeeds all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and dwell with you eternally. Amen. We'll close with joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 376 in your hymnal. 376. Amen.